What is up you guys and welcome back to my channel, Sam Kelly here and today I am talking to you about all the things that I wish I knew before I started working as a respiratory therapist. So this video is going to be perfect for those of you that are in respiratory school right now looking to become respiratory therapists or will soon become respiratory therapists and this video is also going to be perfect for you if you are trying to do a little bit more research on the respiratory profession and find out if respiratory therapy is for you. If this is your first time with me today, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Thank you for clicking on my video. I really appreciate it. If you like what you see here today, you could totally subscribe. I do a lot of respiratory therapy content, pre-PA tips, as well as soon to be PA student content. So if any of that sounds like something you'd like to be watching, definitely subscribe, ring the bell if you'd like to be notified of when I post, and like this video if you like what I'm talking about today. So. Let's get on with the video and I will tell you all the things I wish I knew before I started working as a respiratory therapist. One of the main things that I wish I knew before I started working as a respiratory therapist was that the respiratory therapy profession is not widely known by the general public. I knew this only because I didn't know what a respiratory therapist was before I started respiratory therapy school. It is important to know because it is its own profession, but you will be spending a lot of time explaining to your friends and family that are not familiar with a lot of healthcare professionals that you are not a nurse. Sounds obvious if you say that you're a respiratory therapist, but you will get this all the time. Oh, so you're like a nurse. No, this is its own profession. You will be spending a lot of time educating the general public, which is great. If you're an advocate for the profession, that's what we need to do and educate the general public on what our profession is and what we do. This can become kind of annoying, but this is just what we got to do. Another thing to note is that the role of a respiratory therapist can vary greatly in responsibility across the United States. So what I mean by this is that the role of a respiratory therapist fits into healthcare the same no matter where you're working. But I'm talking about the daily duties that can differ from hospital to hospital or state to state. In school, you're educated the same way as every other program regardless of your state. But besides our basic duties, there's certain things that can differ from hospital to hospital and what you're allowed to do. Some hospitals train respiratory therapists on inserting arterial lines. That is very unique. My hospital that I worked at, we did not insert arterial lines, but I know of some respiratory therapists that work in different parts of the country that do go through additional training at their hospital to insert these arterial lines. Another thing is ECMO. Yes, you learn about ECMO in school, but you're not always the one managing the ECMO machine itself. Usually that requires additional special training that some hospitals and some locations offer, but not all. At my hospital, we just manage the patient on ECMO, we didn't manage the ECMO machine itself. That was usually done by perfusionists or an ECMO nurse. Another key responsibility that can vary widely across the United States is intubation. I believe most programs teach their students how to intubate on a mannequin and then also may require some intubation rotations in the hospital, but it is not overly common that respiratory therapists intubate autonomously. At my hospital, respiratory therapists were allowed to intubate with additional training in code blue situations. So that means if we were the first person to the head of the bed and we had that additional training, then we were allowed to intubate in that emergency setting. Or if we asked the provider in a non-emergent setting, we could intubate while they supervised, they were more than happy to let us do that. Not only did you need the additional training to intubate, you also needed to maintain a certain amount of intubations per year to keep up that special training, which allowed you to intubate. Besides those specific duties, things that vary in the profession is autonomy. Certain parts of the country definitely allow respiratory therapists to have more autonomy so I would say different parts of the country definitely allow respiratory therapists to have more or less autonomy. This definitely has to do with your medical director or your doctors that you're working under. It's about their level of trust in you. I believe I had a very large amount of autonomy at the hospital I previously worked at. That's because the medical director of our medical ICU also was the medical director of respiratory care. He worked in the ICU and was very educated on what we did and our education level. This medical director 
really trusts our ability and our education as respiratory therapists and provided us with respiratory driven protocols, which meant we were allowed to increase and decrease respiratory treatments and medications at our discretion, which meant we didn't have to go to provider to increase or decrease the orders. We were allowed to do that through our respiratory therapy driven protocols. Not every hospital is like this, but there are ones out there that do give their respiratory therapists a little bit more autonomy. Another thing that you should know is that a respiratory therapist's education is actually widely unknown about through other healthcare professionals. What I mean by this is a lot of nurses and even doctors don't know about the training that we go through. For example, some nurses and doctors don't know the in-depth education that we have that gives us knowledge to be able to perform our duties. I think this can definitely hinder us as a profession, but like I said before, when we're educating the general public, we also need to educate our fellow healthcare professionals about certain classes we have, about certain education we have and how our education allows us to critically think to not be what people used to call button pushers. Yes, terrible term, I hate it. But respiratory therapists used to be thought of as button pushers. What that meant was that we were only able to do what a doctor set forth in a order set. So if a doctor said increase the rate to 12, we would follow the order exactly, increase the rate to 12. What people don't know now is that we have the education to critically think on our own and be able to not just push buttons per order sets. We have the knowledge to be able to recommend treatments, recommend medications for the patient, recommend therapies, and have a knowledgeable educational discussion with other healthcare professionals to work as a team to better our patient's care, not just be told what to do. So that is why now we're called respiratory therapists versus respiratory techs. And it is good to know as a respiratory therapist, you should never just be blindly following orders. If an order comes through that you're not comfortable with or you don't believe the patient would benefit from or say they ordered it every six hours and you believe the patient would benefit from a treatment every four hours, it is your job and with your education and knowledge in the respiratory system to go up to that provider and have an educated discussion so you can learn why they put that order in or maybe educate them on why you would do something differently. A lot of times I've run into providers that don't know our education and that also are happy to know of our level of education and knowledge of the respiratory system where they didn't see things in the viewpoint that I did because of my specialized area of study. It is so great to just educate people on your role at all times and do it in a respectful manner so that they know why you're important in the clinical setting. So another important thing to know before you become a respiratory therapist is the education level. You can get a bachelor's degree in respiratory care, which is exactly what I did. I knew right out of high school, I wanted to get a bachelor's degree. So I went to a college and transferred into a respiratory therapy program. What that meant was my freshman and sophomore year were general education requirements that normally you would do for any standard bachelor's program. And then the latter two years, my junior and senior year, I was just in specialized respiratory courses, which was a respiratory care program, and it was accredited by the AARC, so I was able to sit for my boards after school. You're also able to get an associate's in respiratory care. This is a two-year degree at a community college that you could go into and just get the associates, which is the latter two years. So you will not have a bachelor's degree after completing this program, but you will be eligible to sit for your boards. These two years in the associates program is the same exact education I got in my last two years of undergrad. You can also have a bachelor's degree from a different program that you did if you originally majored in something else in undergrad and then wanted to become a respiratory therapist. You can just do the two year associates degree so that you can then become educated and then sit for your respiratory boards. It's important to note that you will need a bachelor's degree at some point in the near future for our profession. Our profession is going toward bachelor's degree eligible candidates only. So yes, you can still get hired as a respiratory therapist with an associate's degree, but certain hospitals require you to go back and get your bachelor's after a certain number of years if you don't already have one. It doesn't have to be a bachelor's in respiratory care. You can do a bachelor's in public health something like that. But it's important to understand that you will need a bachelor's degree in the near future as a respiratory therapist. Another thing to know before you become a respiratory therapist and with any healthcare degree is that you will have a lot of on the job training. What I mean by that is in your respiratory program, you're gonna be learning a lot of those basic building blocks 
that will then help you be able to critically think once you're in that situation in the hospital and working as a respiratory therapist. You'll have that basic knowledge in order to apply it to real life patient situations. There's no way you could learn everything from a textbook, but you definitely learn a lot and the foundation that you need to become a better respiratory therapist through experience and through that on the job training. All healthcare professionals are lifelong learners and learn so much on the job. I worked as a respiratory therapist before PA school for three full years and I learned something new, at least one thing new, every single day. So if you're a student right now and feel like you're about to finish school and you're worried about not knowing anything before going into the profession, don't worry, a lot of us felt that way. You learn as you do. So once you start that job and go through orientation and hopefully have great preceptors, you'll learn so much more. You'll learn by each situation that you go through every day and always ask questions, you'll always learn more. And that is the beauty of the profession. All right, and that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you learned something about the respiratory therapy profession. And I hope that you learned something that you need to know before you become a respiratory therapist. Thank you so much guys for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, comment down below. If you're thinking about becoming a respiratory therapist and have any questions, I am happy to answer them. Don't forget to check out my other respiratory content on this page. I will tag the playlist after this video is done. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Ring that bell if you wanna be notified for my next video. I post every Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and I will see you guys next time.